ใช่ไหมฮัลโหลอีฮัลโหลเจมส์มอร์นิ่งฮัลโหลแพทริกมอร์นิ่งมอร์นิ่งมอร์นิ่งแพทริกเฮ้ยคุณตอบปิ้งปิ้งปิ้งเดียวกับพวกเราจ้ารู้我问一下。Hello, yes. Where was I? Again, I just joined this thing. SGI. SGI. Sing. So sad. Yeah, and Facebook is on Suns. Facebook in Menlo Park is on Suns. So, no, Oops, that, that am I unmuted again? Yes, you were. I don't know. Okay. Nobody say, all right, thank you. <laughs> this happens to me every time. Sorry, everybody. Hey, Dorothy. Good evening. Patrick, hello. Can you ask? Hello. Hey. Hello, Roy. So Milan will be able to join. He'll be just ten minutes late. Uh, so I'm waiting for Pratesh and. Uh, well, Pratesh is joining. Yeah. Hello, Shiwei. Uh, hi, Rory. Hello, Shiwei. Uh, hi, uh, are we waiting for others? Uh, I see Samia is joining. Right, I think uh, we should uh, be good. Yeah, we can start. Okay, uh, how about Mili? Melinda is going to join in 10 minutes, so we can start for now. Okay, thanks. Sure. Um, do we need to take ten, ten five minutes to go over the agenda? Yeah, I think the eleven agenda. We might want to rank them in the order of priority. Otherwise, we won't be able to cover. For sure, we won't be able to cover all of them. That's right. That's right. Um, let me. Yeah, this. I think the purpose for this call is a technical discussion first. Did you identify any items for uh, where like a PR or a technical query? Let's handle that first. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing is we the first thing in the agenda. The first point is about uh, whether we are going to plan for release alpha. Four or alpha three patch. Um, are there any remaining work for that? What's what's the plan collectively that we are going to take? Be, this is before release uh, RC dot one. I can jump in for that, Vani. I would, what I was thinking is that. Um... Uh -huh. The ORAS RC3 is released. I think the only dependency is when British um, uh, checks in is implementation change, then we should be able to cut a new release. My query to Yi or Feynman was they were going to document the release steps so you and I can practice it and doing an alpha four. Just wondering if uh, there were some changes we identified, have those been merged so you and I can follow the steps? Yes, sure. 
Go ahead, Dean. Uh, yes, I, I mean, I can uh, work with the summit. Also, on okay. that uh, release uh, steps for, for the uh, library. Uh, one question from my side I see Bitesh uh, created a pull request for the uh, for relax this uh, self signed certificate chain, but that is only for the spec. How about the implementation? <coughs> yeah, so even the spec, I have moved that as, uh, PR to draft because the changes leads to an invalid certificate. So I will revise that PR. Like I realized that after I was I was reading one of the RFCs and the and the specification which I have suggested in that PR leads to invalid certificate. So I have a question here for, for Roy, like for self-signed certificate, do we want customers to let them increase the chain? Like for example, ideally if the customer is using self-signed certificate, they should only be able to use for signing the artifacts. They shouldn't be able to create a, like a certificate chain out of it. They shouldn't be able to create an intermediate CA out of it. No, they should only use it to sign an object as a as a leaf certificate. There's no reason for them to be able to create a CA or an intermediate out of a self-signed certificate. And that's correct, yep. Uh, but um, I think version three of, uh, of PK, I think certificate version three needs the root to be, have a basic consent equals to CA equals to true for version three. Yeah, we kind of so when we when we modified the spec, we kind of made it not support self-signed certificates. If you're trying to add them back for testing purposes, then that's that's understandable. But now we have to go and change the spec a bit. Yeah, and the problem is it's leading to invalid certificate. If if I try to restrict the self-signed certificate only for for signing artifacts, it's leading to invalid certificate because according to version three of PKI. Or certificate. I, I forgot the RFC name. I can share the RFC. We cannot have a root CA with CA equals to false, or self signed certificate with CA equals to false. Who, where is that failure happening? Uh, when we try to validate the chain, uh, I, I can oh, share because, the RFC. Well, well, there is no chain, so. Yeah, yeah, sorry, but I mean, I did, well, I did but, the signature. But, but hang on a second. So PGP requires self-signed certificate, you know, as as a as a fundamental principle. So there's something else going on here. Uh, sure. Let me share the error which I was getting. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so when I was trying to validate the certificate chain in Golang using this function, which I can share on the Slack or here. So this is like how we were validating the certificate chain. And basically in this case, the root and the, so basically the parent and the existing certificate both are same. So it will, it checks for like according, and it says that according to RFC 5280, if basic extension is present in version three, the uh, all the extension present but CA button is not false asserted then certified public key must not be used to verify certificate signature. Basically in, in our case, basic consent won't be present. And we will have, we will use the same, we'll have same certificate and the parent, like basically same issue and the like, the issue would be the same. Yeah, the basic constraints extension yeah. is present or not? It present? shouldn't it won't be it should not be present. That's what we are saying. If it's not yeah, present, it says, it says is present, but the boolean is not asserted. Yeah. So it's it's both. If it's if it's not present, it will throw an error. If it's present, the boolean should be asserted to true. Otherwise it will throw an error. Okay, so let me find the, the answer to this because you got to be able to use self science certificates. That's why they were designed for uh, PGP. Okay. Okay, so let me go find the, the answer to this guy. Mm -hmm. I have to go do a little bit of looking around. Yeah, I did try to look around. Like I did, I wasn't able to find much on this. So yeah, that that would be really helpful. 
Yeah. Okay. Let me see if I can find something. Mm -hmm. While I'm doing that, let's move to the next item. So, Roy, uh, once again, before we go to the next item, so Pritesh, this is exactly what you were talking about. You need some more thinking for that commitment, uh, not commitment, I would say, the planning that we have on 16 for the work yep. to be done for the self-signed certificate. Yep. So, yep, that's based on, yeah, yeah. So, would you say we you will be able to complete on 16th with this uh, nuances? Like, once Roy gets back to us, that's when you will be able to continue the work, isn't it? I, yeah, I, yeah, basically, we, uh, we won't be able to publish the PR unless we have consensus on that. Correct. So we'll revisit that. So because this is inclusive for the alpha four, right? Mm -hmm. Or do we want to drop this out of alpha four? Exactly. That's the question uh, for everyone here. Uh, is that I think is that okay? Like, uh, sorry, I think uh, it should be in the alpha four because it's a break the end and the workflow. I, I reported an issue if you can check in the GitHub, so it's related. So I think it should be in the other four. So, so this is for getting, getting started, right? Thanks. Um, this is for getting started, uh, showing examples which use self-signed certificate um we can we can go with a version that supports self-signed certificates but i think overall what it seems is there's, there's still uh, questions to be answered here before we have it in its final form uh, we we probably won't have a concrete spec update and based on that we we do the implementation but if you feel from an alpha perspective you want to demo this or so show this, get started easily and then test out the rest of the scenarios without having to get a full certificate chain. Uh, we, we can have a version in there, but it won't be the final version. There'll probably be breaking changes around this as we figure this out. Pritesh, what do you Go think ahead. about that? I, mean, I, I can push Steve. something out, but it is not the right thing because with the current spec, it's invalid certificate and it will fail it. I can have something out, but that will have a, basically I can have a change out where we allow a self-signed route, which will, which, which customer can extend to issue certificates also, but that is not the most secure design. For Alpha 4, yeah, we can do that if we want that. I think I need... Steve is I think I just need 12 hours to, to find you an answer and I'm oh, yeah, to go. Yeah, let's, wait, yeah, let's I, wait till then. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Let me find you the answer and I'll get it out to you. Thank you. Hey, Steve, uh, you have your hand up. I, that was the question. And I uh, just, I want to make sure we maintain the getting started that is not cloud specific. So customers feel or users feel comfortable with it. Uh, this was in the code, so I'm not exactly sure when, you know, if something can be rolled back or something, but if Roy can come up with the answer by tomorrow, then great. It was probably in the code in the initial version, but when we updated the spec to say minimum two certificates in the chain, uh, that is when the implementation also got updated. I think we can move on to the next one. We got a bunch of topics. Yeah. This is for the estimates for migrating to OCI artifact from ORASA artifact. Uh, we are, we're talking about the second item in the list. Yes, second item in the list. Yeah, I think that is something um, 
that is kind of important for rc.com so i missed this discussion i know this has been uh, talked about a bit before right uh steve sajay uh, what are your opinions here on tracking the uh, there's currently a issue but it also depends on the oci artifact spec uh, which i believe there's an initial version of it Yeah, I mean, there's two parts to it. There's the convergence of Aura's artifacts into OCI artifacts. That one, it literally some string changes, so that's pretty minimal. Um, there's obviously some checks to see which registries, you know, there's a, a sequence to figure out whether it's the registry supports Aura's or OCI yet. So that's a minor detail. Uh, it's an important one, but a minor. The one that's more uh, impactful in the sense of the amount of code that has to be written is the, what we call the fallback support. When a registry does not support the new artifact spec, how is it persisted? That one's more coding. Um, I think it's just a matter of figuring out where does that fit in the schedule. The, I mean, the, to be fair, the specs have not been cut as a release yet. So we need to be careful not to destabilize what already works. But the changes I would expect to, that would be between now and a release getting cut are probably more string changes than behavior changes. So the conversation we had last time was from the two uh, groups of maintainers that are working on the project so far. We both have an Aura's capability. Um, so we don't need to fall back as the highest priority. So as long as we can land the work that we've been planning in RC, getting this work queued up um, which is all in the Aura's APIs uh, would be good to have. But I do think it's a second priority to having, you know, a stable RC out. Does, has AWS, I remember there was a new person, and I'm sorry, I forgot their name, was working on some of the Aura stuff. Is that something that, that person can help with on, because all this is in the Aura's libraries. It's not actually in mutation. Sorry, could you repeat that? From an AWS side, I believe you had a new person that was working on some of the Aura's libraries. Is that true? Is that, does that, that person have any bandwidth? Um, yeah, I believe it was oh. Nima that had joined the call last week and is uh, kind of sharing some of the opinions on the registry side. Um, I okay. can't speak to how much bandwidth they have there. Okay. Because this, I mean, the beauty of the way we've done this is there's nothing in notation that has to change. It's all in the Aura's library. That said, it still needs to get done. So um, there's more work on fallback, but the work on the primary registry stuff is in, is pretty well known. It's literally just string changes, and we even hoping those some of those string changes don't even happen. I'm I'm not. Uh... Based on what you said, let, let me let me reiterate. I think there are gaps in my understanding. Uh, the ORAS references uh, implementation in ORAS client that's already working, right? There's correct as in the client the client already supports it, uh, and then the the OCI's references spec. There's a initial version that came out. I'm not sure what is the designation of that version, whether that's a RC. Uh, is there a concrete plan to support that in ORAS client is, is my question. And like, if yes, what is the timeline? Yes, there's a concrete plan. Um, no, there's no date on when the OCI specs will be released. Both AWS and ACR, both AWS and Azure, have a working implementation today. So the question is, when will the OCI specs be merged and a release cut, not merged, they are merged, but when was it, when will a release be cut? Because there's still open questions. And when, and based on that, we need to prioritize resources after the RC1 priority to finish the work 
for uh, registries that do not support the artifacts spec. So when you say registries do not support artifacts spec, you're talking about ORAS or OCI spec? Either. So the, the OCI spec is basically the ORAS spec. There's a string change that changes it from uh, underscore ORA to OCI. And then there's a current property name that's renamed in OCI and there's a PR to name it subject as well. So the difference between OCI and ORAS is literally string changes. Got it. Okay, so they are very much compatible except for these yeah. specific changes. Yeah, so it's, it's the one that we have not done engineering work on yet is what happens on down level registries that do not support artifacts, including GitHub, GCR, JFrog, so forth. Right, but uh, we, we discussed about this earlier, right? And this, I mean, the OCI coming out with a spec is, is a stronger standardization story, right? And then for fallback, but like it, it doesn't need to be as prioritized as we were originally thinking about uh, or as based spec. I'd actually suggest that is the higher priority because that's where most registries are. Like the only registries, there's two public cloud registries, two big registries, you know, Azure and AWS. We both support the artifact spec. It's currently under ORAS. It's easy to change to OCI. That one's not a big deal. The rest of the registries are not gonna add artifact support all that quickly. There, there is a lot of work to be done to it. What we need to do is we wanna be able to support our customers that are using JFrog or Nexus um, or other registries, including Docker Hub, that don't currently support any artifact spec, OCI or ORAS. So I'd actually, I mean, the, the work to go from ORAS to OCI is minimal. I'm not worried about that. I am worried about who has engineering time to implement the changes to the image manifest that support references. That will support Docker Hub, GCR, JFrog, Quay, all the other on-prem registries our customers use. I think it's okay. okay to take this work in phases. Um, if we are kind of ensuring that um, whatever the OCI spec is going forward, um, we're, we're addressing that part of it uh, in the ORES client. Um, that's, I think, a great start to have. And then the fallback mechanism for um, registries that haven't updated um, to the newer OCI spec, um, I think is work that can come as a future um, addition. The only thing we'd want to make sure is that the um, ORAS client um, doesn't have any breaking changes going forward and can support that fallback once that's added in. Um, so if you have yep. the client commands finalized, I think that's a good place to kind of go cut um, a release and, 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 and add that in notation. Yeah, actually, the beauty is that notation doesn't have to do anything other than take the updated ORAS Go library. That's what I'm getting at. Basically, yeah, so, the ORAS Go library will do a check of registry for what it supports and can gracefully fall back. That's the design. Okay, so so in terms of the answering the question in the agenda item, right? Migrate to OCI artifact from ORAS artifact in OCI client that that work is minimal, probably probably a week, two weeks at max, kind of stretching it, just I mean, updating it's to string a PR for string changes, reviews, and cut a release. It, it's very yeah. you know then notation has to take that updated release, so it's more that the release process is much more than the actual coding. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I think that gives a sense so, of what we were looking for. So that's a matter right. of two weeks, right? Um, uh, based on the discussions. Yeah, probably a week. Taking the changes to the PR. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I, I do, and, and I appreciate Nia's what you're saying is a lower priority for the existing registry. I'd actually suggest it's a higher priority because that's where a lot, I mean, our customers obviously use ACR and ECR, that's a given. But I also have a lot of customers that have on-prem registries or they're even running 
other registries in our cloud because that's what their standard is. I'm assuming you're in the same spot. So unless we give them that fallback capability, you know, there's plenty of features and why they wouldn't have already switched to ECR and ACR in, in our respective clouds. This wouldn't be a deciding factor would make them switch. It would just frustrate them by not having that capability. So there is work there to be done. There is a larger chunk of work. So if NEMA has some bandwidth to help, um, you know, Shiwei's team, that would be fantastic. Yeah, I, I, I agree that like, you know, that work is going to be impactful. Um, but if you're looking at sort of like, you know, feature prioritization, I think um, getting something out that we know is going to meet the OCI spec um, um, as mm -hmm. the first release, and then we focus on fallback as a second kind of like work. It's really more kind of like, you know, having to choose between um, two really high priority impact things and we can get one done, right? So I think the OCI spec, <clears throat> given the scope and that we can get this done, um, let's move forward here, and then we can look at resourcing for the fallback. So, Sajay, I think I saw you. I'm in the car, so I can't see everything on the screen. Um, is you? Do you have any concern about how fast we could switch from OCI to ORAS? Sorry, ORAS to OCI. I, I mean, they, they have to cut a release first. Yeah, no. So this week, Lucky needs to push the discussion of cutting the tag. If the tag is cut, I think um, there are two parts here. One is um, getting Auras updated. I think Shua is already, we have a OCI playground kind of a repo where folks can build this out. Uh, timeline wise, I think we need a little bit more time to cost this out. He has a plan um, at this point to kind of migrate Auras to support this. Um, we can discuss in detail, uh, or you can kind of talk about the items that needs to happen because of workflow. It'll impact the client, right? You change it, it'll it'll change everywhere. So it's both server and client side changes. So I think the change is small, but how we roll it out, we need to kind of like discuss what's the priority. Do we do uh, OCI and then ORAS, or do we yank ORAS out, or do we do only OCI? Those kind of discussions need to happen here first. So uh, e, I, I don't know whether you're in a point where you can share the broader plan that we have discussed. Uh, yeah, uh, actually for ORAS Go for the library, uh, the current plan is uh, late October. We can support the OCI uh, reference type, including the fallback workflow. And we plan it in the milestone uh, ORAS Go uh, 2000 RC RC4, and we will start first day in the uh, OCI playground as uh, Sajay mentioned, and we we probably could have uh, some pork early to be to be delivered to uh, uh, to give a try for for the customers, but for the official release is uh, late October for our school library. So do you want to create a issue on notation go to consume this one? Like that's how you can push these things through, right? Like track notation go to consume the new OCR artifacts. At least let's create an issue so that um, from a public standpoint, we are committed to kind of moving down the OCI path. Uh, those kind of questions get answered at least. Uh, Nias does, um, and uh, Milan, does that kind of, um, I, I don't know whether I gave a concrete answer, but is the plan at least clear in terms of how we want yeah. to go? Yeah, I think this is the data that we we were looking for. You, yeah, we've, you said that. Yeah, we just didn't. No, this is because we, it was all so many moving parts. But uh, there's work items on Auras already, do, and you can like you mentioned, end of October we should get this working uh, on Auras side. Uh, we can have a checkpoint where notation can consume it at that point. If the tag is cut, then we can say, okay, this is the plan going forward. We can make those calls in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I, no, this this is good data. Uh, you called out that there's a plan. There are some unknowns. Yeah. Thanks. So um, I have a question here. So this function that that you gave me, Pratish, this is for checking a certificate chain. So if it's a cell signed certificate, check signature from parent doesn't make a lot of sense. Yep, it's checking for itself. Yeah, well, so. the, according to the RFC, if the issuer and the uh, DN are the same, it's a self-signed certificate, you wouldn't even, not even supposed to come in here. Because otherwise you have to look at the 
the length of the chain and apply the restrictions for the basic constraints. Yep, and that's so we still want basic constraints, right? We still want to enforce that they shouldn't be able to issue a certificate out of this self signed certificate. So we have but, then it, but then that would be a chain, right? So you'd at the root, you would hit a self signed certificate. In the case that you've got something signed with a self signed certificate, there's no parent to go after. So asking it to check this and walk up its chain will turn around and give you a failure. If it's a self signed certificate, you don't bother looking for a chain. Yeah, but we still have to verify a signature, right? That it's signed by itself. Just to make sure the private can public but, us, like but this, basic, but this basic constraint is that whole section you gave me, 4.2.1.9, is about basic constraints and CA issued certificates. And this is not a CA in this case. It's, you have to take a different path when it's a self-issued certificate. So basically you're saying it's it's okay to have this constraint and we can just bypass this code and write our custom code to validate that? Well, you, should, that, you basically can ask the certificate.check signature if it's a self-signed certificate, right? There's an, uh, there is a scenario where a CA will issue a self-signed certificate for, for key rollover. But if you're looking at validating the signature on an object, you wouldn't come through these basic constraints here for to look at a root. Got you. So basically, we'll have to write our custom code to validate if we cannot use Golang one. Makes sense. But just to confirm, it's a valid certificate, right? Even it's a self certificate. Yeah, a, That's a, yeah. There's two cases where there's a self issued certificate. One where you're using self signed certificates to to sign things, and another one is for key roller by CA. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to come through these, looking at certificate chain and applying the, the CA issued policy here, you're gonna to have to take a different path. And I think it's basically gonna be that last line there, return parent.check signature. You're gonna to have to just take the, the parent.check signature call there with the extra. Makes sense. I'm just only worried that if, if we support that and customer tries to write by OpenSSL, OpenSSL might fail that validation. That is a valid self sense certificate or not. Well, OpenSSL is different than checking a signature. Yeah, yeah, but I can just go and view and verify the certificate, certificate in OpenSSL also, right? I can use yeah, OpenSSL but... to validate a certificate also. Well, you can use the self sense certificate for client off, but it isn't going to tell you anything. It's just going to allow you to do encryption, right? Yep. Makes sense. Right. Right. So yeah. you're, you're trying to apply CA semantics to a certificate that by definition doesn't have it. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think the RFC wasn't clear enough on the self signed certificate scenario to say what, yeah. what path it, to take there. And the Golang implementation has this specific that it expects the hierarchy and specific rules for the root. Um, yeah, well, that's why the function is called check signature from an apparent. I think you just want to do check signature. So, uh, Pritesh, did you did you share the spec link? Spec yeah, PR I did. link. Uh, okay. So, I, so I, I, the, I have a check PR level, link. Let me check share that. Yeah. Okay. At a high level, Roy, what we are proposing is. See, the self-signed certificate scenario will be treated as a, the rules that will get applied is same as a leaf certificate. That yes. means that self-signed certificate cannot have CA true or cert sign key usage. So you can't yes. extend a hierarchy out of it. It's just yep. meant for signing on it. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, you can view the PR there. It's a small change. Uh, I think we are in agreement there. Okay, I'll I'll make sure Ian double checks my math here tomorrow and, and get you a definitive. But yeah, you shouldn't be coming into this function for check signature from. That's for a chain. Cool. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. I think the first two we discussed about uh, 
we completed that. Next thing is, I think uh, this is about the notation core gori factor about the cosine. Yeah, how do we want to do this? Uh, I think we have, again, today is more of a technical call, but we have some roadmap items too. This will probably take the rest of the call and just just kind of calling out like, for example, Sajania, Steve, you you may not, like may not be the best use of your time. Uh, at the same time, if there is any other high priority item in the rest of the list, if you've seen the agenda that you wanna pick up in the next five minutes, we can do that. Otherwise we'll get the PR, PR comments and getting through closing this three factor PR. I would say uh, because the, some of the engineers on uh, the Microsoft side can only make this call, um, let's prioritize that. Um, we can uh, join back in on Thursday um, um, for the rest of the agenda. Cool, sounds good. <laughs> Sanjay, you're right. Thank you. <laughs> um, Okay, I can I can share screen. Give me a second. All right, is my screen visible? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. So I I see Pratesh has a bunch of commands. I think mine one was a net just on this envelope key repeated could be changed to duplicate key error if we think that's a generic enough scenario. I didn't see a need for that to be a very specialized error. I think the uh, the important one was this. Uh, I like the content and envelope content naming, but then yeah. now this envelope content wraps the signer info and payload. I thought we were just going to rename the signer info to envelope content because now there is these two properties and the signer yeah. info also contains payload. So... No, uh, signer info does not contain payload. Let me see. Where is the, I don't know. Right. So here, signer info has the oh. payload. Oh, I see. Yeah. Envelope content has payload. That, uh, uh, that, that think, helped me. Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, Bing just want, just forgot to remove the payload from the sign info. Okay, so we are saying there's a okay top level envelope content divided into signer info, which is all of this metadata, and then the payload. Yes, payload stuff, which is the actual payload and the content type. Yeah. All right, that seems good. If we can make that make that change. Okay. Um, comment on that. <laughs> Just let people know that I was, <laughs> he had duplicate content. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. I'll add a comment. Let's go on to. Sorry. Pritesh, we can cover ones which are more contentious. I think on the one is like we are doing the wrong exception names there. I think for even when we are editing sign request, we are saying invalid signature or something like that. Apart from that, 
I think there was some multi-threading issue somewhere. I am not sure whether it's there or not. I was susceptible it's, about it's that. Like, the mal malformed, um, the malformed ones were were they previously present? I thought they were previously present. They were present, but they were malformed. Sign request instead of signature error. Okay, I actually had a the the naming is little. Let's go to the errors. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the naming I had some feedback. We use like malformed, unsupported, um, and then. Signature envelope not found. I think at a high level, could all the malformed one be just changed to invalid? Like invalid signing request, invalid, invalid signature. We can do that. Right. No, normally, or there's, I think there's, yeah, I think that that seemed more consistent. And then the, uh, where is the even the signature algo not supported? Uh, we can have the unsupported, so you can we can rename this to unsupported signature mm -hmm. algo error is in line with unsupported signing key error and let's see unsupported signature format error. So just two classes of either with prefix in invalid or prefix unsupported. Okay. Uh, can you comment it on the PR? Yeah, I can do it. I'll I'll have to do it in another window. I'm not logged in on this one. Um, give me sure. five minutes after the call. I'll put in the comments. Yes, thank you. Also, I had one more comment on this. Apart from uh, this is comment, just ignore this. This is nitpicks. Uh, ignore this. Ignore this. Yeah, move, uh, move further. Move further. This one. This one. Multi-threading yeah. this one. Yeah, I'm not sure if this will happen or not, but it looks like a potential point for that. Uh, no, uh, it won't. So basically, uh, this uh, function will be called uh, only in the uh, init function. Uh, so the go long will load the init function one by one. So there's no multiple threads. Okay. But that's based on the caller's usage, right? We are, we are assuming the caller registers these in their inits. Maybe, I, I don't know how, like what is the convention, but in some of the other languages in the API documentation, you clearly say this is not thread safe. Is that is that something uh, which is? I think we can uh, add some documentation on it, saying that, okay, okay. yeah, do not call it. Okay. Not... <laughs> okay, I'll add that comment. Um, yeah, I think missing we have validation, signing scheme, signing agent. Yeah, we are missing a couple of validations which were earlier there, but we forgot to code them. Okay. Signing scheme, there are only two values. As for the enum, you're saying we had it earlier. So we still need to validate, right? If there are two values, so it's not passed or anything. Uh, did we validate before? I mean, before yeah. this PR? Yeah, we did that. Uh, can you comment out uh, where's the related code? Sure, I can do that. Yes. And the so signing, yeah. yeah, same about signing agent, Pitesh. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Okay, then media type. type. Yeah, it's basically now earlier we had media type as a, a separate a specific type. Now we have moved it to a string. So I was like, do we want to have move it back to a, spe a, a, a its own type or do we want to do it as a string? Uh, I think string is okay because it's a media type. 
and all media types are strings. Uh, but I think then the question still, uh, probably still, isn't so more. Go, go on, Pradesh, sorry. Just go anywhere, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, in, in terms of supporting additional media types, right? I think right now we are saying the pay, like theoretically, the payload could be, the payload could be in any, of any type, but for notations perspective, it is this particular type. Um, I don't know, it's almost, it's it's questionable whether this media type should even belong in the, again, tell me if I'm wrong, it belong in the core Go, should it be pushed to notation Go? And then core Go allows you to create a, uh, of any payload type, uh it's um it's arguable um because currently our spec is is tightly coupled with this payload version but there's no interpretation of this payload done at this layer right I, uh let me see um I say uh, currently no, we only do validation on signing the envelope and the verifying the envelope. If the payload is not in, the, in this type, then we just fail. Yeah. Um, I guess the question is in, in terms of, again, this, this is just taking a different perspective. Somebody wants to yeah. use this library, the, they use the envelope format, but they want to support a different payload. It, uh, it seems like I, this will become a blocker. I, I think for RC1 or or even 1.0, uh, we we can keep it. And we can relax it. We have a, a, a version two payload. <laughs> yeah, I think that sounds fine. We can relax it. If 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 required. Uh, uh, I don't think it blocks this PR. I mean, block cozy. Uh, it's another topic. Sorry, come again. Uh, I mean, uh, I think this is for other topic. It's not related to this PR. Yep. Yep. That's fine. Yeah. yeah and I think by it's the way, uh, thing is uh, we are refactoring a code. The thing is that we are refactoring the code base and we are moving away from one way to other way. That's the thing. Uh, so earlier in the code base, we have defined it as a specific tie. Yes, but usually we don't have a tie for the uh, for the media type. Uh, for example, I just pasted the uh, media types from the image spec in the chat window. Uh, so as you can see, there's no types associated with the media types. So we are not going to do any validation on them? Yes, because uh, if you define a type to it, that means we need to convert every time we use the type. And also, um, uh, I, I'm so, not sure why we are having a type for it. It's not enough. No. It's a yes. string. So basically, let's say if we have more than one type, then in future, if we find an unrecognized type, we have to fail that. Yes, then, then we, we then we do a switch. Okay, so I switch this string, whether it's uh, recognizable, it's not, yes. then, yeah. So if, if a notation cannot verify an unknown media type, it shouldn't even generate unknown media type, right? Yes, but uh, it, it's not, I mean, uh, I don't see anything related to having a type for the media payload type. Yeah, because the, the thing is like uh, notation verification is tied to media type because we read the payload, we pass the payload values based on that. Yes. And if we cannot determine a media type for verification, then we don't even support it for signing. Because things like that, if I sign the media type, which is not supported, but ultimately the verification will fail. Yes. I think that you're asking a unrelated question to this comment, which is 
do we validate the payload when it is passed yes. in, right? Yeah, I mean, that, that drives this conversation because if we have well-defined, then we can validate it. If we are just saying that it can be any string, then we don't have any validation. Okay. If we are saying it's yeah. a set of string, then, then we can define types for, for type for it. Uh, currently, uh, when we receive a envelope, we validate whether the payload content type is this media type or not. If it's not, we reject the payload. Yep. Yeah. But yeah. But do we, we do we check the JSON? I think is the question. Uh, we, uh, we we don't check the JSON. So basically, if uh, if there's an envelope and its media type is uh, is this payload. And it's well signed. It's passed the integrated check. It's passed the authenticated check. Then we will use the payload directly in the notation go. So uh, I'm not sure whether we need to check this authenticated payload or not. Yeah, I think it might be okay for notation go layer to ensure that. But yeah. then like it, it doesn't bring any real value to checking this value of media type is correct if we don't check the payload. I don't want to block. I don't think this is a blocking issue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, can, well, a, we can remove it. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, yeah. It's just that we need to add more checking notation go. We have to keep track of that. That if we, have, if we are doing that, we should add a check in notation go to do it. If we are moving it from here, uh, doing, doing signing. Uh -huh. Uh, I thought okay. I thought currently we, I mean, the code path constructs the descriptor. So we are the notation go layer is creating it. But I think That's you true. are right in terms of notation core go will allow you to sign some string, which may not be JSON, but you say this, the media type is this payload JSON. Yeah. Probably because we are not doing enough validation. Yeah. We can track this in a separate yes. issue. We can track this. Uh, I, yeah. I think yes. there's. So if you if you if you want to remove this media type constraint in the not in Kogo, please comment so we can remove yeah. this PR. Yeah. Uh, and move it to the notation Go library. Yep. Do you want to, shall we discuss that a bit more? That, that is the last comment here. Uh, by the way, who will comment on that? <laughs> Milin or British? Uh, British. Me? Okay. Like, yeah, I think we can remove this check completely of media type and the payload itself. We can just allow any random string and let notation go handle it. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, way, if I just want to have a warning that uh, the JWS uh, implementation uh, we have now uh, does not support non-JSON objects. Yeah, I know that also. <laughs> but like right now, we are we are not using JWS for signing, right? We moved away from JWS for sign, JWT for signing. Yeah. No, sorry. The the JWS. Yeah, JWS, the, the JWS allows. allows... allows... However, the implementation uh, we have have limitation because the JWT uh, library does not support non JSON files. So, I mean, non yeah, so, so the specification oh. does support it. The library which we are using doesn't support that. Got yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that is going to be that may be limiting in some extensibility scenario. Oh, but 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 oh. we are not using library for signing. We are using library for verification only. That's also a catch. No, for we we are using library for signing, right? We are using the Golang JWT for signing. No, we are not. We moved away from it because to make it work for signing was more work than just to write our code. No, the update the updated PR uh, from Shiva's team has that. Oh, okay. Then it's, yeah. Let's discuss it when that when that PR comes up. I think it seems like we're okay. doing some trade-offs there. 
Uh, okay, I think we just need to go, Pratesh, you and me, and put in the comments that we discussed. Yeah. And do, do we agree that we need to remove this check here for media type? I feel because that is more, more flexible. There is nothing that notation core go is doing at its level related to the actual yeah just checking this field and not checking the uh, the payload itself doesn't make sense either we should check both or check none and if yeah, we want to we time. can further restrict it so at, at a yeah, high I mean, level yeah go on is it a thing uh let's remove it for for time being or if you don't want to remove it let's add a validation that if let's restrict the media time add a validation for payload yeah. Uh, I, at, at a high level, I, I wanted to say, go on, Mali. No, Melinda, what Pritesh is telling, not removing totally and having the validation for the payload here. I am voting to remove it, not have any validation. Okay. okay. Yeah, same here. I think we can remove it. Okay. Uh, I was saying. Uh, the I, I want to my my suggestion is we treat the libraries uh, kind of RC non-breaking status separately from notation uh, based on how close we come to a stable API during notation CLI's RC release. I think we can still take a call whether we want to finalize the API and call it. RC or not, that, that may be still still an option that we can exercise. So if, if we are still not happy with some elements of the public API, uh, I don't think we should be blocked from creating the notation RC1. The library's RC status or non-breaking status can be can be deferred if we, if we really come to that point. Um, Shiva, does does that work? Uh, can you repeat again? Basically, I'm saying we can decouple the currently RC means after that there, there should not be breaking changes. Yeah, RC towards GA. I'm saying we can decouple the RC status of libraries versus CLI for end users. Really, the CLI is what we want to enable. To start with, let me know if that, that if that that is incorrect. And the right. libraries, if we yeah, if we are still debating on the APIs, we are still stabilizing the APIs, and I think that's going to happen. We yes. can still continue by just doing notation RC release, and the libraries may not be designated RCs because we are stabilizing the API. Yes. So um, for notation Coco, I think we can release RC total one. Uh, before releasing others, uh, but for notation go, I have concerns uh, because uh, during the development of Oras and Oras Go, we found that uh, we actually find a lot of uh, API issues and uh, uh, bugs in the uh, Oras Go when we're developing Oras CLI. So Got I think it. this, this stuff will happen in the notation. That means okay. when we develop notation CLI, we will find okay, this API does not make sense. Or this yeah. is not good enough, or uh, we have bugs in the notation go, and then we need to fix them. Cool. All right. Um, that was about it on this one. I think post call, give me like five minutes, I'll put the comments in. And we are at just one minute. Is there any quick topic that we want to cover? Money, uh, for one minute, <laughs> <laughs> Pro okay. probably not, but we want to make sure how much ready we are for release one. So probably we need to get to the testing strategy as well, along with the other user stories that we are on track. Probably we need to work backwards on a particular date and we need to see if it is accomplishable, right? At least, so, Sanjay, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, David, so last call we discussed with David, I think the two 
few things that weren't clearly or let's see number 5 and 6 in the agenda items the diagnostics logging correct we we said this is just follow up we we discussed about let's have diagnostics logging at a minimum for sign and verify as part of rc1 and then second priority was logging so i think we want to rerun that decision here with larger group and see if we have any disagreement okay. that was one and end to end cli testing Hope, uh, i think yeah even that i think uh, milind you said that we will uh, narrow down it for uh, sign and verify which is the yeah we, yeah we can narrow we can narrow down the cli end to end testing mm -hmm. for stable commands um, yeah i think yeah. I, I, that would be like minimum sign verify and login probably correct the, yeah. the link is broken there in the agenda right um yeah i wanted to check um uh, shiva uh, fenman ye steve do you, any disagreements that i think we we were still debating about how much diagnostics we want to include for rc1 yeah i think shiva you were talking about one week effort versus three week effort and i think in the last meeting when milan was uh, discussing about this i don't think you were part of that on last thursday so is there any comments there uh so regarding to the uh um okay so uh, first of all we I need to sorry <laughs> I, sorry i would sorry to no, interrupt i would i would i would not um, take it from a like a estimate perspective if if okay. it's going to take more than that it will take more than that i think what we are debating is is this important enough to be included in rc1 and we said we are not talking about overall diagnostics for every command let's start for sign and verify for rc1 because those are important yeah um i think adding the adding those debug info will be quicker as long as they are in the cri but if we are uh, if we want to add those logs in the notation go then this will be complex yeah um, it is in the notation go actually <laughs> so the the way we envision that to work is uh some context variable etc basically as the call goes from cli into notation go and from notation go to notation core go each of these apis returns an additional parameter in the in the return context whatever that has the log entries and that set of log entries gets bubbled to cli and then cli can basically ignore it or whatever and you you pass the flag in right you say debug is enabled therefore emit logs whatever yeah so uh, so uh, actually i i don't want uh, the notation go to have log a uh, uh, specific logic yet so um i think the logs in the cli can be in the rc1 but the logs in the notation go cannot it should be post rc1 but there's no complex logic in cli as such right i think like what we talked about last time is for example verify uh there's uh, yeah, this the is, idea is that if we want to add log logic in the notion go then we need to pick up a, a solid logger first should we use logris or zapper or apex or other loggers they have different apis or even system logger i think at a, at a minimum there's um uh, i guess we'll have to talk about this more maybe yeah. like next next <laughs> monday i think i think what yeah. what we're looking for is notation from a, from a cli perspective when you say debug you get some formatted log output and why yeah. and why that is important is irrespective of the complexity right like maybe it's going to take additional time but like what what minimal logging features can we accomplish i'm even fine having just entries in a string buffer etc being passed around to start with 
the, the reason I say is, for example, verify, which has the most complexity. Uh, you have trust store resolution, then uh, the policy evaluation, the specific set of evaluation checks that are done. There's like a whole algorithm. Yes, I and I, I suspect like the bugs or difference in what is expected versus what is customer C will be in all of these code paths, right? There's too much branching logic in that area. And that's where the logging will help. Yeah. So even if we get started with something simple and dirty, that is fine. As long as the CLI emits something that is usable for debugging purposes. Okay, then then we need to pick up a logger or at least the file interface first. Yeah, basically the API inputs to have some logging enabled parameters and the API output to have some string buffer or whatever is the equivalent, which gives you log entries. Yeah, uh, so uh, minimum, uh, I want to uh, just saying that our notation goal should not depend on any specific loggers. Yeah, that could probably, probably could be done then like, for example, then CLI takes a dependency on a particular logger and supports yeah. file-based logging or et cetera. That, I, I think that that's probably a good goal to have. We can, we can do it that way. Uh, again, I, I haven't thought too deep about this, but you, you're right, you probably don't wanna take a dependency on a specific library in, in logging library in our library layer. So Milind and Shivev, can we have this as an agenda for Thursday to conclude the logging itself? Uh, maybe next Monday, we'll go for Thursday, Thursday calls, uh, Shivev's team doesn't attend. Oh, because okay. of the timing. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because of the timing reasons. Yeah. 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 Uh, but that's fine. I think we discussed a bit more. And the next was the CLI end to end testing. I think we are in agreement that we, we can't do a RC1 without yeah. having some automated test coverage. Yeah. And we can limit the stable commands. Yeah. Milin, the seventh comment, Shivay and Milin, the what I have put as the review, the test is for stability for our C1 is uh, David, uh, please pitch in here. This is basically once we are ready for the release one, is there any showcase or something that we will collectively look into for the from the stability perspective before we actually uh, make the updates and uh, do the release launch itself? I so David is not on the call. Oh, he dropped. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry, Steve. Then, I was talking to Steve. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, then, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm looking at review the test results for stability of RC1. Like, ideally, we want this to be an automated step, right? So, release won't yeah. even happen if there are some end to end test cases failing or like PRs don't get approved. Same thing that we do currently for unit tests. Correct. Post release, do we do any showcase in this meeting? Like just to go through once? I think we haven't or... done it in the past, but for RC, for RC we could do, we could do a few times even, like you could do announcements in the channel and say we'll be doing demos, et cetera. Yeah. Steve Shive, do you agree with that? I mean, I, I'm trying to understand exactly what you're asking because I, I can interpret it a couple of ways. Are you asking if we're just basically doing a demo if like using distribution and using the features? Are we doing a demo with one of our clouds? Like what's the, I mean, I'm trying to understand exactly what you're asking. Uh, with one of our clouds. Okay, so ACR does have the reference types work already rolled out. So this would work with ACR. We, we test this on a regular basis and it is rolled out to our customers in all regions. So we could definitely do that test. I'd love to do more announcements on it. 
Um, I not I haven't tested it myself. I know we saw that you uh, AWS announced uh, Soki, I think is what it was called uh, last week, and it looks like it support. I mean, the, it's got the references to support Ors artifacts. So if that's true, then you'd be able to demo this on ECR as well, which would be awesome. Yeah, I think this is uh, one year separate item to track for post-release activities, like post RC1 okay. release activities, okay. demos, et cetera. Okay, sure, yeah. And from, uh, from the scope of the end-to-end -end CLI testing, that would include putting in the uh, gating criteria for release and PR approvals, just like we do for unit tests today. All right, uh, we went a little bit over, we can cover, actually, if if people don't mind, if we can touch upon TSA and revocation, uh, because she was team is here. Uh, these should be quick items. For TSA, we said the, in the link there, there are four items, implement timestamping support, um, Enable like how uh, I think I want to get Shiva's input here. How important is this to get in RC one? I think based on that we can. Uh, it depends on whether we want to uh, support short lived certificate or not. So short lived certificates uh, kind of really really depends on each end kind of end provider service provider or whoever is doing integrations, et cetera. Uh, I think we can, if if there isn't a blocking scenario uh, for Microsoft, we are fine punting this to RC2. Um, yeah, Steve and Bimei, do you have any comments on this one? So I'm sorry, what was the context on this one? You guys told me I didn't need to be here, so I wasn't paying a lot of attention. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Um, this, this is the, the TSA timestamping mm -hmm. support. So we we had timestamping support in the early alpha. Uh, we want to, it implements CMS verification and there's uh, additional code in there because Golang didn't natively support it that we want to take a few review passes over and make sure it's in line with the rest of the code base, uh, test coverage, et cetera. Uh, the question is, and if we don't have this, what it means is uh, RC1, if it doesn't have this, whenever you generate a signature, whatever your signing certificate expiry is, the signature's validity will be limited to that uh, to the certificate validity. Whereas with TSA support, what you get is even beyond the certificates expiry, signature remains, remains valid. So the sharp edge there is if you generate signatures using short-lived certificates, say which are valid only for days or one-time certificates, those will break if you don't have TSA support. So the question is- Yeah, do, do, okay. Yeah. I don't know if so do Corey, you, have... you still... He might have dropped already. Um, our plan there is that's where we're leaning into the skit protocols, that there would be a notarized uh, extension. So I'm not worried about the TSA. In fact, we were, if I remember right, we were actually not wanting the TSA to even be in the uh, certificate. There's an issue covering that. So if it's not in, we're fine by that. Okay, I think post RC1 though, it's it's good to have because we are supporting signing, right? Like customers can bring their own certificates and then you have this sharp edge where suddenly signatures end up being invalid. Okay, then we can fund this for RC1. Do you do you still wanna double check with uh, Roy? Uh, yeah, Shiwei, are you there? Uh, yes. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Um, not quite. <laughs> All right, why don't we, uh, why don't you, Ari and Roy, just take it offline and we can just discuss with Ian because I may not be remembering it right, but that's my recollection. 
Okay, then we, we can take this offline uh, based on discussion with Roy. Um, all right, the last one was revocation. We didn't invest uh, any in this particular story yet. Very early in the requirement, we had done some work. Uh, I think my, uh, what, what I feel is we RC1, given that it cannot have breaking changes, means that even if revocation support doesn't come in RC1, say revocation support comes in RC2, signatures generated in RC1 should be able to support that. We, we cannot generate signatures or have certificate chains which don't have the expected metadata. And then you say in RC2, when we release this feature, some set of signatures support revocation, some set of don't support revocation. That, that's, that's my sense. Do, do we agree there? At least from a mechanism perspective, we should lock down the mechanism. That means doing the spec work, at least in RC1, and the feature work can be done in RC2. So out of the spec work, if we know, uh, if we are only relying on certificate, CRL, OCSP mechanism, or we are relying on some additional metadata being emitted some places, we have at least that much, that much done in RC1. I am worried about other other aspect. Like if we are not doing a revocation check, then artifact might be working. And if we start doing that, then it might start failing. For example, for a certificate which has uh, OCSP configured, it might be working till now because we are not doing revocation check. In future, if we enable it, it might that start is right. failing. That is right. I think uh, we have talked about like a, that before. It, yeah. yeah it, no, you are you are absolutely right. It needs to be called out as a specific behavior in RC two. It is it is breaking in terms of if you took the same signature and ran it by the tool again in RC two, it will show invalid. But from an end customer perspective, given that I'm assuming here most validations will happen at deploy time rather than every every kind of runtime, et cetera, it would not be a, uh, it would not be a impacting change, but you're right. It would be a behavior. It would be a breaking change in terms of yeah. behavior. Like if we are and, okay and, with I'm, this, then I... and I'm okay to take that behavior, like that breaking change. Uh, that's why it's a discussion point. What, what do others yeah. feel about that? It's like, so there are two things which we, which you said, one is, they won't be able to revoke existing artifacts. And the second revoking thing is- Revoking existing artifacts uh, really depends on yeah, the like, mechanism, right? Yeah, but I think we should be okay with that. That's like, there, there are two things which we are discussing, which are like different, which, which are linked by revocation, but they have different consequences. Mm -hmm. So for first- Revocation, I, I revocation I, can, be, can be done. At the after the so you could revoke older artifacts after we support revocation by doing certificate revocation. Yep. And I'm fine um, with that. I mean, what does other people think about that? Like I'm fine with like not supporting it now and introducing it later. Also, it works. If you're explicitly calling out in our documentation. Yep. Um, Steve, Shiva, any feedback there? I hate doing this. Repeat it again, please. So I'll also, let's see. This was also called out in the spec. So if you go to that link mm -hmm. and sorry, I'll give you- I'll Yeah, that was the link to the hack talk. Yeah, I'll give an alternate link. If you open this link and just go to the section above it, which says revocation check, there's a paragraph about revocation check and there's a note in there talking about RC1 revocation support and breaking change. So that's exactly what we are discussing here. Okay, I'll uh, just read this quick paragraph. Okay. 
Shiva, can you review that too? The link that I shared, just scroll up. There's a revocation check section uh, with a note. That note paragraph is what is important. Uh, yes. This was my understanding of the agreement. Yeah, we were going to pick it up in RCQ later. And to your point of, you know, we might be signing stuff now that we couldn't necessarily revoke later. I, I hear no, it. We, I'm not overly worried about it because it's additive. It's not like it's a breaking change. It's just an additive change. Yeah, no, we, we could, based on the mechanism, we, you could still go ahead and in RC2, you could revoke the certificate that will, that will revoke previously signed artifacts from RC1. The, I think the, the main change we are worried about is artifacts which validated using RC1 notation. Some of those artifacts, if they were revoked, now the same artifact will show up as uh, it will not pass signature validation, which is the correct behavior, but it's a, it's a breaking change. I mean, I'm hoping we can get from RC1 to RC2 relatively quickly. And it's more important for us to get an RC1 out that's incomplete to get feedback. So I'm personally, I'm okay with that. Uh, I, think, feedback? Uh, I don't have concerns because it's RC version. So it's okay for me. All right. Okay, that, that was about it from the agenda. I think those were, we have a few that we didn't get to, those can be discussed on Thursday, but these were the important kind of decision points. Uh, anything else to discuss? Anybody or then we are done? Um, yeah, Million, I have uh, one last question related, okay. related to item five, uh, the diagnostic logging uh, feature yep. request. So uh, do we agree to uh, support this feature in RC1 for the basic sign and the verify workflow? Yes, I think that that is what we are, at least that is what we recommended in Thursday's call, and then we discussed it now, right? I think the scope of this, what we are limiting for RC1 is just for sign and verify. And we will discuss this further in next Monday's call. Uh, but I think the kind of the technical solution we are leaning towards is notation core go and notation go do not take a dependency on any specific logging library. You just emit logs, pass it back in the response, API responses, and then notation CLI in RC1 could just emit it uh, in CLI on 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 the file based on the options, and we can look into if we want to use a particular logging library post RC one. I think that that would be the smallest scope that can be implemented. So just confirming because I like the idea of doing it the right way, the way Shiwei was kind of discussing because people who use the ORS Go might have their own logging framework. For the purposes of RC one, can we just add stuff like if somebody says debug? you know, dash dash debug that we have something that spews out, but it just, but it doesn't spew out all the time. The user has to implicitly ask for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In all of these cases, the, the user has to, it's, it has to opt in by saying minus minus debug. Awesome. Okay, thanks. All right. uh, cool. Minin, I have uh, <laughs> one more question about uh, item nine. Sure. CLI to manage trust store and trust policy. Uh, I know it uh, could be uh, complex uh, for the trust policy, but for trust store, it's uh, straightforward. And uh, and we also have a proposal for for how to manage the trust store. We we, we have a document somewhere. I can I can share you that link to see uh, whether you have any comments. And from our side, sure. I uh, we would also suggest to include trust store. Uh, the CLI for uh, for RC one. That sounds good. Uh, I think here you also have CLI spec for signing, and then this one we yeah we need to review that. Uh, I I can I can spend time on that, and it's it's basically everybody has to give their inputs on the CLI spec. Um, 
That sounds good. The, the so that will kind of incrementally make trust store modifications available through CLI. Uh, just uh, want to call out that most of the complexity is in the trust policy. The trust store commands would be like, I don't know, trust store add or cert add this certificate to a particular path. Yes. Uh, yes. And yeah, that's definitely good to have. If we can pull that off in RC1, I'm, I'm, I'm for it. Yeah. I can send that link on uh, managing trust store uh, in the notation channel so you can uh, reveal it. And regarding yeah. to the sign experience, I add a comment uh, in that sign experience issue. So please have a, have a look. So you, if you see that uh, this needed to be removed or changed, I, I can issue a PR to, to do that. Yeah, I think the only comment I want to make is, and I'll, I'll put it in the trust store CLI spec that you have, is probably the trust store CLI commands may not be stable because when we do the trust policy commands, we might think of better ways to integrate both the trust store and trust policy in a single command, et cetera. So we might have to put that under an experimental flag. We'll, mm. we'll, we'll look at it. I think once I look at your PR, I'll, I'll have a better sense. Okay. Thanks. Cool. All right, thanks folks. Bye. Yeah. Thank, well, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.